Hi guys, hope uh, the weekend went well and we are ready to carry on with uh, chapter 10. So let's get started. <clears throat> so chapter 10 is um, about linear equations, linear functions, and we're going to start with what's known as Cartesian coordinates. Um, Cartesian coordinates, also known as rectangular coordinates um, for what it's worth. Um, the, oops, sorry guys, let me grab my pen here. The, the term rectangular is used today, but actually it's named after a um, term for Cartesian coordinates. And Cartesian comes from the uh, French, French mathematician and philosopher René Descartes. Anyway, what's, what's some, some ideas here? Well, we have, first of all, you'll notice we have two axes. Each axis is itself a number line. This doesn't seem like a big deal to us, but at the time it was revolutionary. No one had ever taken and thought to take two number lines and orient them perpendicularly and then be able to affix things. This was revolutionary because what it did was it allowed us to assign coordinates to geometric objects. And up to this point, geometry and arithmetic or geometry and algebra really were very different subjects. This combined them together. Um, and so while we take this for granted, at the time it was quite revolutionary. So we've got two axes here. The horizontal axis is known as the X axis. Now, depending on context, we might call it by some other name, but in general, it is the X axis. Um, also known, to hold what's called the independent variable. When we're talking about functions, that's where the independent variable is located. The X, or I'm sorry, the, the vertical axis is known as the Y axis. And when we talk about functions, this is where our dependent variable will be. So if you have some rule or equation telling you how X and Y relate, then this Y axis is the dependent variable because the, var the value of Y would depend on the value of X, okay? And we also have things called quadrants. This is quadrant one. And um, as you move counterclockwise, you get the other quadrants. Quadrant two. Quadrant three. And here we have quadrant four. So quadrants one, two, three, and four. And you might notice that the signs change. So um, any point can be given as an ordered pair, x, y. This is known as an ordered pair. Ordered because you, the first number represents the x-coordinate, the second the y-coordinate, and pair because, well, there's two numbers. The x, the first coordinate tells you how far to move left, right from the origin, and the second, how far to move up, down. And where is the origin? Well, that's right here. That's the origin, zero, zero, okay? Notice that in quadrant one, the x's, these, are positive, and the y's are positive. Now remember this x-axis is a number line, so if I move left of the origin, and again, the origin is zero, zero, then in quadrant two, my x's are negative, but my y's are positive. Again, to get to any point here, I've had to move left, negative, and up, positive. Quadrant three, well, if I start at the origin, any point down here is going to be left and down, so negative, negative. And then quadrant four, my x's are positive and my y's are negative. Okay, let's practice plotting some points. You may remember doing this in your past. 
um, typical assignment back in, I don't know, <laughs> late elementary, middle school. You know, depending on what time of year it was, you'd plot some points, connect the dots, and if it was near Thanksgiving, you'd have a turkey. If it was near Christmas, you might see a Christmas tree. Um, typical problem, but we're just gonna plot these points. So remember that the first coordinate is X, the second coordinate is Y. So negative two, negative four. I'm gonna start at my origin, and I'm gonna count two to the left and four down. One, two, three, four. So that point right there is negative two, negative four. Four, negative three. So my X is four, so one, two, three, four. And my Y is negative three. One, two, three. So we have four, negative three. C, point five, four. One, two, three, four, five. And then up, one, two, three, four. There's the point, five, four. And again, how am I getting that? Well, from the origin, I've gone five, and then I've gone up four, okay, five, four. How about negative one? So I'm gonna get rid of these just to, okay. Negative one, zero. Well, negative one is right there, and then zero. So we stay on the x-axis, right? Negative one, zero. What's the next point? Negative four, four? One, two, three, four, and then up four. One, two, three, four. Negative four, four. So why don't you guys pause it and try the last three and see what you get. Did you pause it? Pause it. Okay. So let's see, F, zero, five. So my X coordinate is zero. So I start at my origin and I don't move left or right at all. And my Y coordinate is five. So up five, one, two, three, four, five. So zero. Five. Zero, zero, well, that's just my origin. Note about this one, three-fourths, negative nine-fourths. Well, three-fourths, if you think of that as a decimal, that's 0 0.75. Negative nine-fourths, that's, what is that, negative 2.25 as a decimal? So honestly, when you see something like this, I'm just gonna eyeball it. So 0.75, eh, it's not quite to one. And negative two and a quarter is just a little bit past negative two. So that, we'll call it that point right there. Uh, three fourths, negative nine fourths, okay? All right. Well, we could also go this way, right? We could start with points and then ask, be asked to label them. So let's just, in any order, how about we start here? Um, so this point here, it's on the y-axis. There is no left-right movement from the origin. So I know that my x-coordinate is zero. And my y-coordinate, well, it's in the positive direction, right? It's up from the origin. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the point zero, six. How about this point? Well, from the origin, I'm moving right to, and then up how far? Three. So that's two, three. You guys pause it and try the rest. Pause it. Pause it. Okay. Here we go. So this point. One, two, three, four. X coordinate is four, and it's sitting on the X axis. So there's no elevation here, it's at zero. And then this point. Well, let's count the X. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then what, down two, so negative two. And working our way around here. One, two, but in the negative direction. 
and then down, so negative one, two, three, four, negative two, negative four. And how about this last point here? Negative one, two, three, four, five, so negative five, and then up one. Okay, so there we go. There's our points. Ooh, how about these? Which quadrant or on which axis is each point located? Well, let's think about this. Negative one, negative four. So remember this is x, this is y. Remember that the quadrants go one, two, three, four. And so negative one, negative four. I would go to the left and I would go down. That puts me in quadrant three. So third quadrant. Six, zero. Well, I would move right along the x-axis a distance of six, and then I would not go up or down. So this would be simply on the x-axis. And then C, one half, 2,000. Well, if I'm, if I'm identifying quadrants, it's not the, the size of the numbers that I really care about, it's the sign of the numbers, right? I've got a positive and a positive. What quadrant is positive, positive? Well, quadrant one, right? Okay. Now here's a question for you. What are the pos possible quadrants of a point with a negative y coordinate? So think that through for a second. And let's see if you can come up with, with what we're trying to get here. Okay, so again, if you think about the coordinates or the axes, quadrants, all of it, <laughs> quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Well, where are the y's negative? Well, in quadrant three, we have negative x, negative y. And in quadrant four, we have positive x, negative y. So negative y coordinates, those will be in either quadrant three or four. All righty, there we have it. Okay, so at this point, you really wanna get comfortable, familiar with the XY coordinate system. Um, work through some graphing, plotting points, identifying quadrants, all that good stuff. Um, and then eventually we're gonna build up to um, linear equations and how to graph lines and that sort of thing. So at this point, um, at the end of this lecture, what you wanna do is just spend some time familiarizing yourself with ordered pairs, okay? Um, I will see you soon.